You know me as Bravo Von Mueller, and I am your wartime consigliere. Today, we are going to try to connect the dots. After Donald Trump has attacked the small midget country of Syria, after he put on a hundred million dollar Syrian fireworks show, and now the U.S. warships are heading to the starving, pathetic midget of a country, North Korea. What is it all about? What is the history of this nonsense and this insane history of the Republican and the Democratic Party who act the same? What is the history of this? How does it connect to the World Bank, the international bankers? How does it connect to drugs? How does the drugs connect to war? How does the war and the drugs and the international bankers, how does it all connect? And why, and most importantly, out of all these questions we're going to ask, which basically is option number one for the president, why has option number two never been implemented? And option number two would be the basic universal income. It all ties together. Let's see how it ties together. You see, ever since around 1913, 1914, when they implemented the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel, every president has had the option of two different decisions. Number one, give everybody a universal basic income or go to war. Every president, with the exception of probably Jimmy Carter, they didn't trust Jimmy Carter. They only gave him four years. He wasn't really one of them. But every president that has been placed there by the international bankers, the president, whether he knew it or not, see, that's the, that's the idea here. They don't, the Zionist bankers don't want the president to know, but the president actually had two decisions. He can either give everybody a basic universal income, just leave everybody alone, that would be no war, or the other option, option number two, is go to war. We're going to go into why these are two basic decisions, why they're so important, how does drugs connect in there into the equation? So we, we are going to be bouncing back and forth a bit. It may not look cohesive. But remember, it all has to do with the same pattern. War, drugs, banking, Zionist, all against the basic premise of a basic universal income. And like I said, even though I'm going to be bouncing back and forth, remember that every dot is interconnected with every other dot. Now, we're going to try not to focus too much on Donald Trump, even though he is the commander-in-chief. He is the man that had to make a decision. He had to make a decision. Am I going to give everybody a basic universal income, or am I going to go with war? Am I going to keep the military-industrial complex rolling? Well, that decision was answered last week. When Donald Trump decided to put on a $100 million fireworks show in Syria, and now he's sending the naval warships to Korea, we now know what Donald Trump's decision was. He is not going to go with a basic universal income. No. The slaves do not deserve that. No, we're going to go with the military-industrial complex. I'm going to make sure that everybody in the military-industrial complex makes a hundred million dollars. Every time I get a chance, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to push the button. Donald Trump made it very, very clear. In reality, all we really have to do is follow the money, don't we? That's the case every time. Everybody in law enforcement knows it. Every investigator knows. Just follow the money. And Donald Trump is telling us. 
that there are going to be many, many private corporations out there that are going to make millions and millions of dollars. And us po' folk, well, we're just going to die. Well, it doesn't really have to be that way. I mean, imagine if you would stop voting for the Democrat, if you were to stop voting for the Republic, and if you were to talk your whole family into understanding that the Democrats and the Republicans are two private corporations controlled by the international Zionist bankers, why would you even think about voting for one of them? Donald Trump fooled us. But the thing about Donald Trump is he taught us a valuable, valuable lesson. Donald Trump has taught us maybe a better lesson than even Hillary could have taught us. What did you hear Hillary talk about during the whole election? How great she was. She never really told you that the banker didn't own her. She went to the Wall Street banker. She got millions of dollars. She didn't really not tell you that. She, just, she tried to hide it from you. But she didn't, she didn't say anything. We knew that Hillary Clinton was a criminal controlled by the Zionist bankers. We knew that. And she wasn't really telling us no. She just didn't give a shit. Hillary Clinton didn't give a shit whether you knew about it. Donald Trump took it one step further. He lied to us. He lied to us and said, no, I'm not controlled by the international bankers. First thing he did, put the international bankers in positions of power. No, I'm not controlled by the international bankers. It's all about America. Make America, make America great again. Oh, let's bomb Syria. Donald Trump lied to us, and this is probably the best thing that ever happened to America and us nationalists, because we will never, ever, I mean, if you have a brain, you will never, ever vote Democrat or Republican for the rest of your life. You won't even go to vote. I've never really said this, but I don't vote. How could I possibly go vote when I know that both parties are controlled by the Zionists? I couldn't, I can't, and I cannot bring myself to waste my valuable time. I'm going on record here. I usually don't tell people my personal business, but no, I don't vote. And I'm not going to vote until there's a national party, a nationalist party. I recommend you do the same thing. Until we have a nationalist party come out, and you'll know that person will be strong. You think these snowflakes were scared to death of Donald Trump? Donald Trump was nothing. I said that along, I said that over and over and over. Donald Trump is nothing. I said the next guy is going to be scary. It's the next guy that I will actually get off the couch and vote for because he will be in a nationalist party. I will be able to look him in the eye and I'll say, you know what, that man's for real. He will have an army surrounding him. The reason why I wasn't totally enamored with Donald Trump, because I knew when he walked into Washington, D.C., he was not going to take an army with him. You see, if you're going to go up against the international bankers... You're going to have to do it just like they did back in the 1930s. When you walk into Washington, D.C., and I don't even recommend going into D.C., but when the next leader, of the, when the nationalist leader of America takes over, he will have an army protecting him because you will need an army protecting you from the Zionists. That's when I knew Donald Trump was not for real because he was going to walk into D.C. with no army. Only a, only a complete moron would walk into Washington, D.C. and not have an army protecting him. So, again, the answer, we're going to go into a lot of things today, but the basic cut and dry answer is there has to be a nationalist party. He had, and, the, and the people in that party can only be Gentiles, no Zionist. That's the answer. And you also have to have a Gentile bank. You cannot have a Gentile nationalist party without a Gentile bank. We're going to go into it today in detail. But I do want to briefly mention this. And we're going to go into Gentile history for a little bit. We're going to go back into Greek history. When the Greek warriors. There used to be wealthy families. The wealthy families would actually fight on the front lines of the Greek wars. Could you imagine Donald Trump and Jared Kushner on the destroyer? 
when they made that big, big, big decision, you see, Donald Trump and Jared Kushner, they made a big decision. We're going to send Tomahawk missiles into a little small country. But could you imagine if Donald Trump and Jared, the Antichrist Kushner, was actually, they had to be on the destroyer. They had to be right there off the coast of Syria. Syria, And as their lead, as the true leaders of the American empire, they had to be there on the destroyer. And when they made a decision to let the Tomahawks go, in the back of their mind, they had to know that Russia and China also had the technology to make that destroyer disappear. The reason why I bring this up is because that's an honorable society. When we go back into history and we read about the honorable Gentiles, where the wealthy, the wealthy Greeks, they were the only ones that were able to afford the expensive armor. And they were up front, right in the battle, in the thick of things. So you know if there was going to be a war, it was going to be a war that was very, very necessary. Think about that. If the war was going to be very, very necessary, if we had that sort of tradition in America where if we're going to go to war, the leader is going to be right there at the front line. George Bush, Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, Obama, you're never going to see those pathetic pieces of shit in the front line. No, they're going to be, fu- they're going to be hiding away in Mar-a-Lago. Can you imagine? We got warriors over there on the Navy destroyers. We got warriors, foot soldiers on the ground. But the pathetic Jared Kushner, the pathetic Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago. Wow! You think about that and you say, wow, these people really make you sick. You really want to throw up. When you compare these people, when you compare Donald Trump and the Antichrist to the Greek Greek leaders, you literally want to throw up and vomit violently. I want to violently throw up when I think of my Gentile ancestors, my Greek and Roman men. They were out there on the battlefield like Caesar himself. And then I see these pathetic individuals kicking back at Mar-a-Lago, making all the decisions. It tells me everything I need to know. So why don't we start to connect some more of the dots? What do we know so far? We know that our current group of leaders are not honorable men like our Gentile ancestors, our Greek and Roman forebears. We We know that they're not honorable and that brings us to a basic universal income. Now this, guy, this idea goes all the way back to Thomas Paine in some shape or form. Thomas Paine's ideas might not have been exact as what they're talking about today. The idea that they're talking about today is not a new concept. I mean, after you developed a fiat banking cartel... It comes logical to many people. Even C.H. Douglas, back in World War I, after he fought in World War I, it came to his mind that, hey, if you're going to use a fiat banking system, a corrupt, fake banking system to to create war, why can't you do it to have a basic income for people? Even Douglas knew this. He talked about it in his book, The Protocols of the elders of Zion. Everybody who has learned the truth knows it always goes back to the secrets of the international bankers. Their fiat currency system where they use the money to create war. And on the the back side of the system is a drug system. We'll get to that later. How the the drug business is interconnected with the Federal Reserve banking cartel. Now, that's probably the most interesting aspect of the whole story that nobody wants to talk about that, and we'll get to that very soon. But I do want to mention this very quickly, that every president has a choice. He can take you to war where you can be eliminated, And that will solve the problem of not enough jobs. You see, it has to do with not enough jobs. Here I sit before you. 
I am your wartime concierge because there's an army of 100 million of us. There are literally 100 million of us in the United States of America who is not in the workforce. When you really let that sink into your brain, you will start to see the picture. What are the illustrious leaders, what are these crooked, treasonous bastards going to do with 100 million of us who have no job? I tell you the solution is simple. You either give us a basic universal income, which solves the problem, which can only be done with a fiat banking cartel, or option number two, which all the presidents do, except for Jimmy Carter, all the presidents, including Donald Trump, they go with option two. War, because then you just eliminate the unemployed bastard. The, the 100 million of you, you will be eliminated soon in war. There won't have to be. You don't have to have a basic universal income because you're going to be eliminated in war. But the sad fact is, it doesn't have to be that way. All you have to do is stop voting Democrat and Republican. Tell the leaders that I want a nationalist party just for America, no Zionist, please. And I don't care what names you call me. Call me all the names in the book. I don't give a shit. Give me a nationalist who only cares about America. You know how Donald Trump was talking or lying to us about. Donald Trump lied a good game. Three months in, he showed us that he is a globalist Zionist who likes to go to war. But it doesn't have to be that way. All you have to do is vote for a nationalist party. But you also have to have a Gentile bank. You have to have a bank that's not controlled by the Zionists. So before I will get into how our Federal Reserve banking cartel is combined with drugs, how the Federal Reserve banking cartel would probably collapse again if you ended the if you ended the war on drugs our banking system would literally collapse just like it did after the housing collapse but before we get into that connection with drugs in the fed i want to tell you that this basic universal income idea lots of people have talked about it and I want to, and I cannot tell this story without telling you something that you probably don't know, that there was an American, an American, and you never hear about this. There was a great American who said, you know what, we need a basic universal income. And you never ever hear this in the news that Martin Luther King talked about it. Martin Luther King also said another important thing before they killed him. They also said, guess what, what, guess what Martin Luther King said on his last speech? I don't have time to show it to you. Do your own research. The last speech that Martin Luther King gave, he told all his people in Memphis, go downtown, take your money out of the bank, and put it into the black Tri-State Bank. He was killed very, very soon after that. Very, very important, important, very important message that they don't want you to know about. This guy who has a national holiday under his belt, he told his people, take your money out of the downtown bank and put it in your own bank. He called it the Tri-State Bank because he was telling them the truth. They killed him not soon after that. Martin Luther King also said that you need to have a basic universal income. He said it at the same time that he was trying to say that the Vietnam War was bad. You see, Martin Luther King got it. He was not even 40 years old, and he got it that the war, the drugs, and the international bankers are all tied together to keep you a slave. Martin Luther King, what a great man. I don't care what your color is. If you're telling your people that they are enslaved by an international banking cartel, drugs and war, take your money out of the bank. 
He's telling the message is so powerful that he was killed because that's how powerful the message is. Listen to Martin Luther King as he talks about a basic universal income, and you'll never ever hear about this. No, the Zionists don't want you to hear this story. One of the answers, it seems to me, is a guaranteed annual income, a guaranteed minimum income for all people and for all families of our country. You ever heard that speech? <laughs> Not really the speech that Dan Rather and Scott Pelley tell you every January, no. They don't tell you that Martin Luther King said, take your money out of the bank. No, they don't want you to know these secrets. Let's get back to the dots. Let's connect the dots to the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel and the war on drugs. You see, as long as, the dr as, long as drugs are illegal, then you have a hidden group of people who can make tons and tons of money on it. They, take, they pay no taxes on their international drug trade. It's all deposited in the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel, and the system works perfectly. It has been even from day one. From day one that the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel was created, I'm going to show you something that even Wikipedia doesn't want you to know. Wikipedia won't even lead you in the right direction, as I will show you in a moment. Think of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. We call him FDR. They don't want you to know that his mother's name was Delano. And if you go to Wikipedia, they'll tell you about the Delano family, the Delano family. They'll tell you that Franklin Delano, Franklin Roosevelt's mother, was Sarah Ann. They'll tell you that his grandfather was Warren Delano and that he made all his money on the opium drug trade in China. They'll tell you that. But what they don't tell you is that his uncle, right there, look at this, his uncle, Frederick, was part of the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel from day one. What? How strange is that? Wikipedia. Nothing there that says Frederick Delano was the vice chairman, the very first vice chairman of the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel when his father made a fortune selling opium to the Chinese peasants. What a powerful connection here. See, when you really start connecting the dots, you see the government doesn't want you to connect the dots. And they'll even have Wikipedia help them. If you go looking to connect the dots, you got to look a little harder because Wikipedia is not going to help you show you that even though FDR's grandfather made a fortune in drug trade and then miraculously his son is the vice chairman of the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel created in 1913. From day one, they knew that the drug trade and the banking trade had to be married, had to be married like two bastard children into some dynasty. It almost reminds me of the Trump family in some sick, weird, twisted way. Well, while we're on the subject of imperfections, and God knows that the Trump family is far from perfect. Look at this picture. It shows us a slap in the face to the Chinese leader. Where they sit, a 36-year-old child beside him. The spot where actually the head of state is supposed to be, like the, you know, the Secretary of State. I mention this because when I talk about Tillerman or Tillerson, It's, I'm going to tell you something I probably never said before. If you study the ancient Celtic Bible, and believe me, it's very difficult to find the ancient Celtic Bible. I mean, you might have to go to Ireland to find this sucker. But if you ever study the ancient Celtic Bible, every page has one mistake on it. Now, we're talking about beautifully hand-painted, hand-calligraphy, 
the most beautiful Bibles you ever want to see, but every page has one mistake on it. And why is that? Because our ancestors knew that we are not perfect. And to remind us of the fact that we're not perfect, they would put a minor mistake on every page. So sometimes when I make a mistake and say Tillerman instead of Tillerson, I don't, cre I don't correct the mistake because it reminds me that we're not perfect. And sometimes it kills two birds with one stone. See, by, telling, by calling Tillerson Tillerman, it reminds us that he's not even the Secretary of State. Why should, why should I know Tillerman's real name when he's not even the Secretary of State? No, that title goes to Jared the Antichrist Kushner. People don't realize that. One of the jobs on the Kushner portfolio, as they call it, his, he's got like a dozen things that he does. He come, Basically, the Antichrist tells Donald Trump whatever he wants to do. Whatever job that the Antichrist wants, he says, Trump, you're going to give it to me. One of the jobs that the Antichrist has, a 36-year-old, Antichrist. One of his jobs is to meet all heads of state. Now, I thought that was the Secretary of State's job. That would be Tillerman or Tillerson. That, it, it's the Secretary of State's job to meet the, the heads of state. But no, the Antichrist wants that job. I mention it because, you know, it's all in the big picture, I guess. So where is, where is this leading us to? Well, it's still leading us in the right direction. Banking, war, and drugs. You see, what do you think Jared Kushner, the Antichrist, what do you think his ultimate agenda is? It's always about power, but what do you think he really wants to be? Jared Kushner, the Antichrist, wants to be the president of the World Bank. That's where it all leads to. You see, that's why he wants to meet all the heads of state. Because we, when he, his ultimate job, what he wants to be appointed to, when, when he's done with the White House, when he's done, when he gets bored, when the Antichrist gets bored with the White House, he's going to want Donald Trump to appoint him to the World Bank. Yes, that's what, that's what war is about. See, if you're successful in leading America to war, take what's a, what. Wutzowitz, what the hell is his name? Wolfowitz. yeah, there you go. What was his reward for helping lead the president to war? Well, your reward is you're going to be the head of the World Bank or you're somehow going to get into the banking system. Goes back even to Robert McNamara. He was successful in leading us into Vietnam. Robert McNamara head of the World Bank. This, this is a reoccurring trend, a pattern. So we know what the Antichrist wants. The Antichrist wants to be the president of the World Bank. That would take care of all his problems, especially that big, big billion-dollar loan on his 666 building that doesn't have enough tenants. Take care of all his money problems. If you're the head of the bank, well, that takes care of all your money problems, doesn't it? So if you're going to be a master chess player like Putin, or you're going to be a superior poker player in game theory, we really do have to be a few moves ahead of these criminals, don't we? That's not, it's not going to be difficult. I mean, they're only 36-year-old children. He may have the pedigree of the Antichrist under his belt. That may be his pedigree, but he's still young and immature. It's easy for us to understand what his agenda is, because all we have to do is study history. Just like Paul Wolfowitz and John McNamara, he wants to be the head of the World Bank, because that is where the power is. Follow the money. Let's continue to follow the money. And what a strange middle name, really. <laughs> okay, uh, every president, every president who has ever taken us to war, not only presidents, but over in the UK, people don't realize how much power the UK has over America. 
But every one of these world leaders has an international Zionist banker behind them. I mean, they have names like Bernard Baruch. We're going into history now. People like Warburg, Paul Warburg. FDR had Henry Morgenthau Jr. Eisenhower even knew these people. Eisenhower knew Baruch. The thing about Eisenhower, I don't think Eisenhower was very impressed with these bankers. You, you know that Eisenhower left us a message. Before Eisenhower left, he left us that message. Do not let the military-industrial complex who gets in bed with the bankers. Beware. Eisenhower saw it. Some of these people like John F. Kennedy and Eisenhower, they tried to warn us of this secret group of people. The names like Baruch. Every president that has led us to war have these secret, hidden, international bankers behind them. I would be doing you a disservice. If I, did, if I did not include that in the story, we're talking about international bankers. We're talking about drugs and war and how it all ties together. And yes, there were some honorable men in America who found themselves in a very difficult position. And before they left office, they tried to warn us. You can even see by his face. He's not impressed with these international bankers. He's just trying to put up with them. As a military man who knows he can be eliminated, he's just trying to put up with them. And then, of course, in modern day history, the presidents just smile and sit there and take it like Donald Trump, Bill Clinton, George Bush. It seems like all the modern day presidents, they don't have the cojones that Eisenhower and John F. Kennedy had. They just take it with a smile. And nothing has changed. We were fooled. Donald Trump lied to us. America first. Well, now we know the truth. And that's the worst part. Eve, don't, don't lie to us. Because if you lie to us, trust me, bad things are going to happen. So nothing has changed. Jared Kushner may be the modern day Antichrist, but there's been many, many before him. And many of these money men before him, the money changers before him, were smarter and older and more clever than him. Jared Kushner is way out of his leg. This goes back to 1917. Yes, we're going to bring up the Balfour Declaration. You see, they plan these things years and years in advance. They have they have think tanks now, but they back in the day they used to do it in smoke-filled back rooms. This is so important. You think it was a coincidence that Jared, the Antichrist Kushner, decided to take us into World War III on April 6th? 100 years to the day after they decided to bring America into World War I. All had to do with this declaration here. The Balfour Declaration, which promised the Zionists who lived in Germany. For 500 years they lived in Germany. They had never been treated so well. Germany treated them as good as they've ever been treated in 2,000 years of their history on the European continent. And what did the Zionists do? In World War I, when the Germans were getting the best of England, England was about ready to quit. The Zionists who lived in Germany went behind their guest, their host back. The Zionists went behind the Germans back and went to England and said, stay in the war. We know you're getting beat, but guess what? We have newspapers in America. Not only do we have many newspapers in America, we have not just created the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel. Oh, you think that was a coincidence? That the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel was created four years before World War I. They, they figure these things out. They plan their agenda years in advance. And the Zionists said, stay in the war, England. We're going to bring great America in because we own all the newspapers. We can manipulate the masses. 
And we can also decide where the money goes because now we're in control of the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel. We've got the people in there. Yes, we have the people. And we have the drug money. We have the power. And England said, okay, sure, we'll promise you Palestine, sure. Let us win the war. Sure enough, the newspapers and the bankers in control of the president, they convinced America. They didn't convince America. America had no stomach for World War I. But all you need is the president. All you need is the president with an international banker beside him. And when the president says, you're going to war, you're going to war. Donald Trump has already told us that. So, they took us into World War I on April 6th. All because England wanted to win the war. They needed America's help. And when Germany found out about that, a couple years later, when Germany said they found out, it's Jesus Christ, you backstabbed us. You damn backstabbers. You can imagine Germany's pain. Oh, they were pissed. And we know what happened. They were pissed. We took care of you. We treated you so well for 500 years and you go behind our back and screw us. Jesus, that did not end well. 100 years later, President of the United States has a money changer beside him and he decides on April 6th, do it. We're going to go to war. Who cares? Because there's not enough jobs for 100 million of us deplorables. You see, Donald Trump lied to us. He got 100 million deplorables on his side. He won the election, and then he goes behind her back and says, okay, we're not going to give you a basic universal income. No, we're going to send you into World War III, and many of you will be eliminated. And guess what? Then after you're eliminated, there will be plenty of jobs. There's no need for a basic universal income. I am Donald Trump. I know everything. And plus, I got the Antichrist at my side. What more do I need? So there you have it. Let's have a recap. What have we talked about? That there is a secret international banking cartel. That they use drugs to build up their empire. That they use the fake fiat money to create war. And by eliminating millions and millions of people in war, that leaves more and more, that, need, that leaves enough jobs for everybody. And that's the reason why there is no basic universal income because as long as there's war you don't need a basic universal income we found out that martin luther king knew the secret that he told people to take your money out of the downtown bank he told the people yes you deserve a basic universal income but he knew this only because it's a fiat currency system it's a fake crooked, criminal, fiat currency. I'm not here to tell you that you deserve free money. I'm trying to tell you that if the military-industrial complex, if they're able to get free money and they're able to use it for missiles, they're able to spend $300,000 of your money to send out a few missiles. If they get the money for free, why cannot you get the money for free? I think I'd rather give the taxpayer money to you. It's not even taxpayer money. It's free, Federal Reserve, fake, banking, cartel, paper. It's free. It's fake. And if the military-industrial complex can play with this funny money, why cannot real people play with the funny money? So there we have it, a recap. And I will say this, that divided we fall. When I say Gentile, I'm not going back to any definition that goes back 2,000 years or 5,000 years. I don't care what the definition was 1,000 years ago. Today, the definition of Gentile is all my brothers and sisters in America. I, doesn't care what, I don't care what your color is. Yes. If you are black, you are a Gentile in my book. Unless, unless, of course, you're a Sammy Davis Jr. sellout. And you're wearing one of those six-pointed crosses upon your neck like Sammy Davis Jr. did. Well, that was his business. 
We have many sellouts in America today. Many of our Gentile brothers and sisters have sold us down the river. They wear the cross upon their neck. They forget about where they came from. They forget about you and I. We are nothing. We are deplorables. We can be put aside. We are servants to wait on them. Remember that, my army of deplorables. What these people, what these traitors, what they want of, of us, the only thing they want of us is for us to serve them at their table with wine and fine food. You are a servant or take your welfare check and watch reality TV show. The system is all planned out for you. But they are scared. The system is collapsing. So that's why the Antichrist has come to the scene. That's why Donald Trump has the Antichrist beside him. Because they have plans for us. Now, hopefully the Gentiles are smarter than that. I'm hoping. That's why I'm here today. I'm hoping that us Gentiles are smarter than that. That we're not going to fall for the Donald Trump trap. We're not going to let, us, let him lead us down the road of destruction. We are our own people. We are powerful as long as we're not divided. That's why I bring up all of us Gentiles. There's 300 million Gentiles. The enemy wants to argue that fact with me. This is something we cannot ever give up the argument on. The enemy wants to tell us, no, there's not 300 million Gentiles. You're a liar. We will not ever give up that ground. We are 300 million Gentiles strong. That's why all of us, no matter what our color, we are all Gentiles in this fight. Divided we fall, but if you put 300 million Gentiles together, no matter what your color is, we will win. We are unbeatable. All you have to do is have the thought in your head. It all starts as an electrical spark in your brain, from neuron to neuron. This electrical spark in your brain, an idea that you are a Gentile, that you should have your own Gentile bank, that you should have, if they're going to be playing with fake Zion, international banking currency, Federal Reserve notes, if they're going to be playing with fake money and they're going to give that fake money to the military-industrial complex, well, why don't they give it to us? We deserve a basic universal income. We will take that option, option one over option number two, which is war. So you will tell these people, these people who have sold us down the river, the traitors, we will tell them point blank, no, no war, give us basic universal income as long as you're playing with fake money. Sure, give the fake money to the military-industrial military complex. Let them play some war games. Let them play with their silly little war games. But also, if they're going to get fake money, we, the people, the 300 million Gentiles of America, we will also get a basic universal income. That solves the unemployment problem. No need for war. No need for the drug war. After they do this, their international banking cartel system will collapse and we'll be free. We'll be free only if we have a Gentile bank. Forget about color. There is no black, white, green, or yellow. You are either Gentile or or you are the enemy. The enemy is small. They control all the banks. Once you understand that the enemy is small, but they control all the banks, you can flip that against them. All you have to say, hey, I want a Gentile bank. And I also want a nationalist party. You're not going to vote Democrat or Republican anymore because they are controlled by the Zionist international bankers. I think we've been over this a million times. I'm not going to beat this dead horse any further. You need a Gentile bank, and you need a nationalist party. No Zionists allowed. They will try to infiltrate your party. As soon as the nationalist party is formed, 
The Zionist bankers will try to insert their fake billions in there, just like the Koch brothers do today. Just like George Soros and the Koch brothers do today. They will try to infiltrate your Nationalist Party. Do not let them. That's what I'm here for. As your wartime concierge, I will expose the people like Alex Jones who is controlled by the Zionist bankers. I will expose these people. One by one, we will expose them, and then we will have a nationalist party. Once that nationalist party comes to power, you'll have fake people like Alex Jones and the Koch brothers who will try to infiltrate. You will need to be strong, my Gentile brothers. You will need to put your hand in Alex Jones' face and say, No! We will not take no Zionist. This is a, this is a Gentile club. Color, color means nothing. Remember, color means nothing. Success or, for, success or failure depends on a Gentile bank and a nationalist party. That's it. That's all I can tell you for today. Thanks for listening. I am Bravo von Mueller, your wartime concierge, and I will never, ever sell you out to the Zionist bankers. Never.